Good morning, Steve, your Daily Shaver. This morning, something different. This morning, it's going to be trying to resurrect. I'm airing this out, and I put a little out in the bowl. So um, I'm going to shave with lemon and lime shaving cream again. Tubes, of course. Still a bit industrial for me, but it's definitely less. I'm leaving the lid off, hopefully airing it over <laughs> a week, month, next year will lower those scents down to something that's tolerable. Um, this morning, this is a bygone for anybody that gets into my videos. Some mornings you'll notice that um, I wear a watch. I have about 20. Um, along with shaving, it's my other love, is time pieces. Now, I'm guessing that a lot of you out there, now I'm using Samson with the Kong. Shaving cream's already gone and ready to rock and roll. Now, I have um, legit watches, some clone knockoff replica watches, and I have um, just good cheap watches. And probably one of the best value good cheap watches that a man can buy himself, or a family member if it's a present, are Invicta. Now, there'll be some snobs out there and you find me a watch that doesn't have a problem. But pretty much, I've been impressed by the build quality. This morning, these two razors cost about the same. I'll get back to the watch. All right, they cost about the same. That's about $70. Sorry, that one's about $70. This one's about $100. But, the, but um, you know, they're pretty much comparable in price, you know. Um, this is the um, Progress. I think it's America Progress. It's adjustable and the traditional slim. As far as I'm concerned, bang for buck, they're pretty much about the same. By the time I got this one in Australia, it cost me about a hundred bucks. By the time I got this one, it was about 120, 130. So, you know, I wasn't gonna... Now, this morning, I am gonna go for the progress again. I got a good shave. Now, if you're looking for, if you also love watches, all right, so it's a simple two-piece. You screw it together, and as you tighten it, you pick I think I'll go on a four this time, up from three and a half. Ah, it is, I, I gave this a good beat before I got on, trying to get out the air bubbles, but it is kind of fading on me. And the other day, I did think it wasn't the best tubes I've got for slickness and uh, on my face. So it is, it's not exactly as good as its, its mates. Um, Ooh, I feel that bit of blade, but that is a smooth shape, and it's going to be a nice close one. So the watch, this is a quartz one. Now this watch looks brilliant. You know, um, it's a pro diver edition. I can't remember if it had any sub set of their names, but uh, about a hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah, cool. Um, it's got all the features and functions of their thousand dollar watches for one tenth of the price. And there's nothing, nothing available of this sort of quality and build. Um, no, I do have, I think, one of their five hundred dollar watches. Um, it was on sale. I'm a big fan of um, Invictus. I don't have many, only a couple. I've got, um... and that's the other thing. How many watches do you need? Now, if you only use it to tell the time, or you're like a lot of this generation that's been born now that believes the time sits in their pocket, not on their wrist, as is the case with phones, well, you know, maybe you don't care. But, If you've rediscovered shaving, the joy of a good leather, like this, the pleasure of um, the face feel, taking the extra time, it might be time for some of the younger folk out there to start considering checking out a nice timepiece. And the question is where to start. Now you've got your traditional 
Ollies but goodies, your Seekos, your Citizens, um, your Timex, you know, you'll be, the magazines have all the ads for the Amigas and the Rolexes, which, you know, at a certain age, they're like Harleys, which I personally loathe and detest. I'm a motorbike rider and I find them to be too noisy. Just, just absolutely too noisy. <laughs> I don't want to sit on a motorbike and get a headache. Um, I know it's the American hog of choice, but I would take a Japanese um, or um, cruiser over a hog any day. My last bike, a Yamaha, it ran like a Singer sewing machine. Absolutely beautiful. 1300 cc of cruising power. Okay, it wasn't perfectly quiet, but I could sneak up on people a lot more than a hog could. Ooh. Hogs draw attention. I just think I got a little bit of a bump there this morning. And it on five, I think it's on five. I tried taking it off. So I'm not telling other people, if you love and can stand, I mean, I love the look of a hog. I just wonder if you can tune it back to being a decent motorboard. Uh, my American friend, um, Larry, he says that hogs are badly, badly tuned, um, um, not bushwhackers, chainsaws. He used to ride a bike, he'd get off his, at the military base in um, Texas. And ride across to his family in Florida on a bike. Loved it. But, uh, he was never a fan of the big, noisy um, um, hogs. And I definitely replicated his, um, his preference for something that's well tuned and runs well. This is a fraction too aggressive. Might back up a little bit. What are we sitting on? Four and a half. Back to three and a half. Mm, tiny bit. So, uh, Invicta watches. And I get on the motorbikes. Well, these are some of my favourite things. Motorbikes, diving, shaving, um, what else? Photography. Although it's not really an industry anymore since everybody with a phone um, has the ability to take awesome photos if they can be bothered pulling it out of their pocket and go and click. Now the progress um, is a very heavy. It's about hmm, that one weighs a bit, but feels different. This one feels heavier, but I'm guessing they're very close in weight. Need to get myself some digital scope. So if you're wondering where to start for a watch. Say it's your first, first watch. I'd suggest that you go and have a look at eBay. That's where you all do your shopping anyway. And uh, probably if you're a guy, you know, look for an Invicta as a first watch. Uh, should you go automatic or digital? Uh, by the time you get around the $500 mark in whatever currency you're in, you're probably looking at a good but low grade um, Swiss movement in an automatic. Um, but for not much less, you'll be looking at a um, quartz or the much cheaper automatic movements that are available. I'm just going to clean up a bit. Preference. If you're going to take it off your wrist, and you, particularly if you're going to be setting the date every time, you might want an automatic. That you, and they don't, I know people go, um, well, automatics don't take batteries. Automatics eventually need to be pulled apart and cleaned. When you factor in the 
say, $60 to $120 for pulling apart an automatic watch, disassembling it, cleaning it, reassembling it. It makes batteries on a quartz watch look very good value. And I've seen quartz watches now that have more than proved their ability to go um, decades. Uh, so, um, now, having said that, I love some of my watches. I only want them in an automatic. Um, if I buy a knockoff of, say, a Rolex or a um, Amiga, which is my favourite watch, is the Amigas, um, I would definitely go a um, automatic. Now, just an FYI that I discovered, in, um, in the genuine article watches, if you look at replicas, and how to buy a replica is a whole other story. Basically, belong to a replica watch forum and buy off their um, certified um, dealers. Um, or they're actually purchases that go to the factory and um, purchase it on your behalf or off their reseller and um, post it on to you. There's a whole process, it's all described in the forums. Um, some are approaching excellent quality. Now, one thing I discovered on replicas is, uh, I'm bound to have forgotten something where I jumped around here, is the pins on them inevitably are cheap-ass pins. Which means if you go near salt water, those pins are going to rust. The watches are actually quite fine as long as you got them screwed together right. For waterproofness, like any watch. Although I did have a tag that wasn't screwed in one day, genuine tag. And uh, the extra um, rings they put in a genuine one over a fake one meant that it didn't get salt water in it, which I was quite grateful for. Um, so, yeah, it's pros and cons. It depends on what you what you want in a, um, in a watch. Um, I quite love a replica watch I picked up in Thailand. It's a replica of an Amiga doesn't have a date, which means when it stops, all I have to do is reset the date and off it goes. And I love it. You know, 150 buck copy of a $15,000 watch. And since I've seen, played, and actually worn both, five minutes at least for the Amiga, uh, I'm quite happy with the replica. Not all replicas are the same. And uh, if you're going to get something with um, stopwatch, and chronometer or whatever they call it, probably go um, quartz because that way all the sub bits work. Um, if you buy an automatic with all those sub bits quite often 99.99% of the time, um, in an automatic those sub bits are fake. They don't, the movement actually doesn't um, move, which is a pain. Very disappointing. But hey, that's the life of when you blow money on fakes. Sometimes you're rewarded, sometimes you're not. But certainly, up from the fake, down from the um, big name, expensive brands, like, you know, don't get me wrong, the Japanese make excellent watches, particularly for going for quartz. You don't need an awesome one. Me, I look for weight, looks, ease of readability, functionality. These are all screw in. They unscrew, um, completely waterproof to, I think it's three or 500 meters, whatever it is, you're pretty much um, um, only going as deep as 30 on a dive. I probably wouldn't use this on a dive, I have a dive computer, but you know, that's one of their selling points is, some of them have helium valves, and people go, I must have a helium valve. They're only for deep sea divers, they spend time at depth. Oxygen down there, because um, of the compression of the seawater, separates the smallest molecule, which is helium, and it gets out and it gets into the seals and things in the watch. And when you come up to the surface, that helium recombines and expands. And the result is when you have expansion, you have quite often your glass blowing out. So a friend of mine who does deep sea diving um, tells the story of losing a couple of watches in the submersible. When it came back up, the helium valves malfunctioned, which you wonder, you know, you've got to test them to find out if they work. Actually, I'm gonna wash these. Today is wash day. Probably go see a movie. Looks like The Martian's about the best thing playing, so I'll be doing that. Off having some lunch, and I'm Stevie Daily Shaver. 
Um, just yakking about other things. You might be into pens, you might be into watches, you might ride a hog, you might own a Japanese bike, I don't care. If you like riding, that's cool. If ever you want to come diving, Bundaberg's a good place to start and you head on north from here, it's all Great Barrier Reef. I'm Steve, your daily shaver. Good food, good friends, good shaves have been. And remember, while it's nice to be important, it's far more important to be nice. Goodbye and good shaves.